These are my A-level results, and I was very disappointed with them. Um, that's because I did not know how to revise. I did not know how I best learn. And so in this video, what I want to do is show you how I went from something that I was very disappointed in, my A-level grades, to a PhD, something that I'm very proud that I was able to achieve. Now, I'll go through what I did wrong, and this is my journey. So remember that you have to do it your way. You have to work out how you learn. You have to understand your uh, best approaches for these things. But hopefully, there's something in here that you can use to help guide that process for yourself. So I'll be talking about how I went from uh, a relatively disappointing uh, BCC for biology, chemistry, and physics. So I got a C in chemistry at A levels, and uh, how I ended up with a PhD going all the way through undergraduate to a PhD. All right, this is what I learned, and this is how you can do the same. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. I'll put a link in the description. But essentially there, you can sign up for all of the insider information and inside secret projects that I've got going on that you can only get if you sign up to the newsletter. Now, I am working on something in the background at the moment. It's gonna come out in the next couple of months. So to be the first to be uh, told about this project, sign up to the newsletter and I won't spam you. I only send out newsletters when I've actually got value that I can share with you. So go sign up. Let's start at the beginning, the point where I was disappointed. Hairs in my mouth. These are my grades for my A-levels, which is the step before university um, in the UK system. And so I did biology, chemistry, and physics all the way through to A-level, and I got a B for biology, a C for chemistry, and a C for physics. Now, I was very disappointed, and let me tell you why I was disappointed. It was because people were telling me I should have achieved more. And, you know, people are always like, well, you know, when I went to parent evenings and when I thought about uh, the feedback that teachers gave me, it was always like, oh, and he's so clever, smart, he's doing what he needs to do. And so that was my first issue, is that I believe that I could get there through natural talent alone. And maybe you are the sort of person that can get there with, oh, with you know, the minimum amount of effort, but that was not me. Um, but I didn't listen to that, or I didn't acknowledge that because I was being told how clever I was and how, how everything was going to go well and that, you know, oh, he'll do really well, no doubt. And so I was like, oh, great. I don't really need to try then if it's just like natural talent. Thanks, ego. Um, and so there we are. That's where I ended up with those grades. So the first thing to do is realize that um, you have to revise for you. One of the issues I had is that I was revising with and sort of studying alongside clever people, people that were far cleverer than me in terms of having to read the information and actively recall it, not as much as I needed to. Like even throughout, that, that was kind of a theme then throughout the rest of my degree is that I would study with people that, was, that were able to read a bit of information, write it down and then recall it a little bit later. And that just wasn't how I was able to process and recall information. I needed to work much, much harder than they did. And so, um, what I had to do was come up with being disappointed and then being like, well, okay, well, what I just did clearly didn't work. So when I went on to university to do my undergraduate in chemistry, which I got a C in, and there's another thing in here where I got a D in a chemistry subject. Um, and so I was starting to really doubt everything because I was like, well, clearly I'm not very good at chemistry, but I'm, I've decided I'm going to do chemistry at university. Oh no, I'm in a world of trouble. And so uh, really understanding how I needed to learn was the first step in 
improving my grades. And I, after this sort of disappointment, I was able to get first class degree undergraduate at the University of Wales, Swansea. Um, and I got a first all the way through my first, second, third and fourth years. So I changed it very quickly from C grade to active recall revision, which we'll go over next, to be able to get a first class degree, um, which then opened up the door for my PhD. Um, but importantly, this is the thing, is these grades opened up the next step. And that's all that kind of education and grades and all that, you know, sure, I would have loved to have done way better, but I was able to get into Swansea with those grades. I didn't have to beg anyone to let me in. And so in that respect, I guess it was a success. The one thing that made a massive difference between my A-levels and my undergraduate first class degree was active recall. And by active recall, I mean just writing stuff out and testing myself on the subjects that were going to be asked in the exam at the end of the year over and over and over again. First thing is I turned up to every single lecture. Now, undergraduate is a fun time, and I did turn up a little bit hungover sometimes. I did turn up with not 100% of my faculties working, but nonetheless, I was there for every single lecture, always. And this was a time before lectures were online, so if you didn't turn up, you didn't get the information. It was as simple as that, so there was that extra pressure. So anyway, I turned up to the lectures all the time. And then when it came to revise that information, the thing that actually got me over the edge was a pen and a piece of paper which had all of the information I needed to know about each topic. Now, let me talk about active recall in more detail. Let me just get some paper. Okay, for each topic and subtopic, I would create a single page A4 of what I needed to know about that subject. Now, I can't really remember any of the details at the moment, but let's go with um, uh, paracyclic additions. Let's do that. So paracyclic additions I would put at the top of the piece of paper and then I would put down steps and important information so that I was able to answer the past year's questions effortlessly without having to kind of work anything too hard. Um, I would make sure that I would able to, you know, know what they were, the sorts of questions that came up, some examples, some mechanisms, all of that sort of stuff. I would make sure that fit comfortably, like I wouldn't cram it on onto a single page of A4 and then on the back, I would put uh, paracyclic reactions or paracyclic additions or whatever. And then I would simply turn it over read what was on the back, the single sentence, and try to recall everything that was on the back of that page word for word. And I'd write it and write it and write it. And then if I got stuck, I'd stop, I'd turn it over, and then I'd mark myself. And I would get, you know, 50% right initially, or I'd get 80% right, or maybe I'd get 10% right. And so what I would do is then, if I got like it really sort of wrong, I would do it again, right there and then, until I could at least get about 80% of the page sorted. And when I did, I moved on to the next one. Now, I did this up to a month out from exams, and I slowly built up the number of A4 pages that were in my mind. Um, this active recall is so powerful, but you do have to work with your memory to make sure that you're doing the appropriate amount of revision for you. Now, I lo it looked like I had to do the most out of everyone to get the information clearly and succinctly into my head. And so what I ended up with was maybe 20 or so of these A4 pages for each kind of section that I was gonna be examined on. Um, and it was very simple that I would add I would essentially look at how long I had into the exam, and then I would split it up so that by about a week before the exam, I knew all of the pages that I needed to know. So I'd memorize like maybe five or six in the first week, and then I'd add one each day until about four weeks, and then on the last week, I would know all the information, and I would just be going through and double checking that I knew it. Um, and that was how I revised. 
I did that for each and every subject. And that is how I managed to change myself from a C grade student in chemistry to a first class master's um, in undergraduate. And I used the same approach every single year and it just got more efficient. I got better at remembering things for exams. And uh, then that opened up the door to the next thing, which is the PhD level, which I got at the University of Newcastle in Australia. So I went from C, first class, masters to PhD and it PhD is where everything changed okay at PhD level you have to forget everything that you've just learned about active recall unless you're doing coursework and other exams as part of your PhD but this is where the skills that got you to a PhD will no longer work in your PhD you have to change tact so what you've done up to this point is you have passed exams and shown that you have a base level, a fundamental knowledge, which uh, you can then use to apply to a unique research question. But the skills that have got you to that door and through the door now are completely different to what will enable you to finish your PhD. Now go check out my other videos. I've got heaps of them, but the one that I recommend you check out first is, I wrote it down, the perfect PhD daily schedule. I'll put that around here some, somewhere. Um, so go check out that because it really just tells you what you need to be able to do and the sort of uh, ongoing effort that a PhD takes. It's really about compound interest. Every little thing you do every single day towards your PhD, um, you know, you need to uh, build up slowly and slowly until you get to the end and the return is exponential. So for the first year and a bit, you kind of feel like you're not doing much, but you are, you're laying the foundations and then it kind of accelerates up towards the end of your second year and your third year. Um, and so, yeah, the previous skills won't necessarily help you, but your ability to remain agile to the PhD process, your ability to have self-discipline are gonna be the things that push you through a PhD and not the revision skills or the active learning skills necessarily. And that's where a lot of people feel like, you know, they're out of their depth of the PhD is because they're like, ah, I'm clever, I got to this bit. Oh no, it is very different from here on out. I can't rely on the skills that I've just built up necessarily to get me to the end of this PhD. And so I highly recommend that uh, you go watch my other videos about, um, perfect PhD daily schedule, how to focus your attention that you'll, you can be more productive is another great video, but essentially it's there that uh, you will learn the skills that are required of you to complete a PhD. And um, yeah, one step at a time, consistent effort, and uh, trying to stay motivated when you feel like you're just spinning your wheels is gonna be the thing that gets you through a PhD. So there we have it. There are all of the steps and the sort of thought process that I went through from going from a B grade student all the way through masters and undergraduate to a PhD and the journey and kind of process that I had to go through to make sure that I was successful and that I wasn't also disappointed with my undergraduate and my PhD because I can tell you getting the C in chemistry at uh, A levels was quite a blow to me but the good thing is is that you can do a PhD without having to be the absolute best student in your class. Um, it's just about learning how you learn learning how to open up the next doors so you can get to a PhD and then when you're there it's a whole different set of skills and you'll learn those as you go and go check out my other videos where I talk about all of the different skills to get you through a PhD. But uh, let me know in the comments what you would add to that list and I highly recommend that you go watch another video on Active Recall because uh, it is an incredible skill and an incredible kind of technique for passing exams and staying at the top of your class. All right then, until next time, I shall see you in the next video.